welcome, welcome, welcome to another great episode of Create, Learn, Implement podcast, aka CLI. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. I must say the weather is making me feel good. Okay, the the weather is making me feel good. Spring is here. It's been a tough winter. It's been a tough couple of years. So I'm really, I'm excited. And I'm excited to have Makisha Noel on this episode today. She is a digital strategist, community builder, brand strategist, and the founder of Creative Culture. Uh, Creative Culture Tribe, which is a community dedicated to connecting ambitious women of color. So, so much fun to have her on this episode. And y'all are going to hear why on the other side. Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? When I was trying to get this podcast off the ground, I had a lot of questions like how do I record an episode? How do I get my show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all the other places people like to listen? How do I make money from my podcast? The answer to every one of these questions is really simple. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And now Anchor can match you with great sponsors too. So you can get paid to podcast. So when I thought about doing um, starting a podcast, I had no idea how it worked. I don't know how I came across Anchor, but I did. And it was free and it was 100% easy to use. And I love to use it to connect to my audience. So if you've always wanted to start a podcast and make money doing it, go to anchor.fm slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start. I can't wait to hear your podcast. Are you an entrepreneur who's looking for community that focuses on creating ideas, fostering a community that leads to massive growth and acceleration while providing networking opportunities? Then look no further because the Million Dollar Ideas membership is for you. We are the only group that focuses on building wealth inside and outside of your business. The waitlist is open now. Hit the link in my bio to get on the wait list to join this absolutely amazing group with tons of resources and over 22 live sessions planned so far and get that early bird price. See you there. Hey, yes. So let's welcome Miss Makisha Noel. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Today is pretty good. It's good. Definitely have a lot on my plate, but it's all good things. Let them know the struggles we had just getting together. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, hello, hello. Can you yeah, hear me? Can you hear me? Like, it's, I'm just like, really? Zoom, are we doing this today? <laughs> right? um, all the days we could do it. Of all the days, <laughs> Zoom decided to act crazy today, but I'm glad we're right. together. So yes. let, me, let me let the people know who Ms. Nikisha Noel is. You are a culture creator, community builder, brand strategist. Uh, you are the head of Creative Culture Tribe, a community dedicated to connecting ambitious women of color and a digital marketer. When do you have time for, for, for living your best life? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely make time. I, I make the time. <laughs> make the time. Okay. <laughs> So for, for my audience that doesn't know who you are, that aren't familiar with you, tell us a few things about Miss Nakisha. Yes. Okay. So right now you're hearing me, yes. um, but you, people are not seeing me. So I want to start off by saying I am a Black woman. <laughs> so let, let, let's start there. I am a Black woman of Haitian descent, Haitian American, um, from Miami, born and raised, but my family is from Haiti. Um, and so... I, I wanted to lead with that yeah. because I noticed that when people tend to ask, who are you? Or they ask the question of, what do you do? We're also fascinated by titles yeah. um, and all of these big things. But I really learned, especially after starting therapy, which I love to talk about, um, I just 
it, it's been it's become important for me to really realize my existence, my humanity, validate, acknowledge it. But anyway, I'm a black woman <laughs> first, um, and. I am also an event host, a community builder, content creator. As you shared, I'm the founder of Creative Culture Tribe, which focuses on women of color founded in Miami who are creators, movers, shakers, trailblazers across yes. different industries. Um, and so I started this community for us because in Miami, when you look at the spectrum, um, you automatically think of one type. Yeah. of woman in Miami, but we're all, we're across the rainbow. Mm -hmm. um, and we come from different places in terms of our industries, our skill sets, our disciplines. And so I wanted to create a space that really uplifted us and gave us space to be ourselves and to connect um, and to grow, especially in our businesses. I'm also the founder of the Living Room Project, which is, which is a space that I created while I was actually in college, which was a years ago at this point. Yeah. Um, but I brought people together to talk about social issues um, in through dialogue and debate in the living room. So one living room at a time. Um, and I'm so proud of the work that was done with the living room project, because when I started it, um, I my work was acknowledged by the Middle Eastern Partnership Initiative, um, yeah. who flew me to Istanbul, Turkey. I went to Istanbul for the Eurasia for the first yeah. time and got to teach um, young millennials how to build community and spaces that they're in. And so I've taken that work all the way to DC where um, I partnered with Capital One Cafe to talk money for creatives and entrepreneurs. Um, so that's the space that I live in. And I'm also the <laughs> podcast host of On The Move With Maki, which is a podcast that I just launched literally last week. I don't know when this podcast episode is going up. Yeah. But I launched it February 1st to open up Black History Month. Um, but it's 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 amazing. The goal is definitely to tell the stories of creators um, and kind of show a little bit of that background that we don't see. Like, we yeah. see the work that's being done. We see the ads that they, that they put out. Yeah. We see, you know, the strategies that they may have put together. But what we don't know is that there's there's a backstory that they don't often share on social. So that's why I'm sure you're gonna allow me to plug a little bit. Allow of me course, to plug of course. A of course. Uh, <laughs> uh, one of the the very <laughs> the very first episode that went out was focused on Raina Noriega, who's a visual award-winning visual artist based in Miami. Yeah. And to hear her background story of you know how she got into visual artistry um, and you know, just kind of how she thinks and how she moves. It's like, we see the art and we recognize her, like her art comes before her, yeah. but we don't know that we she came from us. She came from a certain place or an experience. And that was beautiful. So that's a very long answer to, to <laughs> tell a few things. I, I, I told a whole lot of things. You told, but... a, whole, you told a whole story, <laughs> but it's okay. Yes, <laughs> and that's who I am. Yeah, no, that's okay. I, I love I love a good storyteller. Yes. Now, yes. In your sit down with Squarespace, you said that building a brand requires tapping into a deeper level of yourself. So tell me more about that space, because people often think it's kind of it's surface. It's just you're just doing this. You're just doing that. But tell me why it requires a deeper level of yourself. Yeah, because there are different sides to brand building. And part mm -hmm. of it is technical with like, you know, perhaps what is the tech stack that you're going to use to keep your business running or you know what are the platforms that you're you're going to use but the thing about brand building is that there's this process process of taking inventory yeah. of yourself and when I tell you that process you are naked you are vulnerable yeah. you're really getting to the heart and the meat of your why yeah I think that's that's what people I want people to understand what I mean when it comes to taking a deeper level is getting clear on what your North Star is, is getting clear on what drives you and what keeps you going. And that's not a one, two, three quick process. It's something that definitely takes time, but it brings you closer to who you are. And, yeah. um, and that's what makes the message that you want to put out so much more unique, yeah. so much more relatable, so much more authentic. Um, and it's because you're, you're taking inventory of yourself and really tap, tapping in. Mm -hmm. Tap, tap, tap in. Tap, tap. That's right. That's right. I agree with yes. you. Yes. Now, as a Black woman, you're in the, the ads industry. That's a man's world. Um, <laughs> Mad men. A mm -hmm. white man's world. <laughs> so I'm sure you've seen and experienced a lot. So what is one thing you want women of color to know that are trying to break into the industry? 
Oh, Lord. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> the main thing with coming into the marketing advertising industry, because technically I do want to make this distinction for people who may not know this about me. Yeah. So I actually was not looking for the marketing advertising industry. Yeah. I believe this industry found me. Um, when I graduated in 2016, you know, just being transparent, <laughs> graduated <laughs> in 2016, I was supposed to start my career in the Peace Corps. Oh. I was supposed to go to Senegal, West Africa, hmm. teaching international and economic development, which I am still very much so passionate about, but I'm also multi-hyphenated, I'm multi-disciplined, and so I can operate in different spaces, but that had nothing to do with marketing, <laughs> marketing, advertising. Yeah. I was going to be living in a developing country, helping them to build the infrastructure of their businesses and how they approach their business solutions. Um, and so I then had to reject my offer to the Peace Corps. And so I started to look for spaces where I can like work in a nonprofit space. Um, and I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward that part because I know you have a lot of questions for me. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> My point is that I, I did have a very strong sense of self um, or a strong sense of what I wanted my path to look like. Yeah. I just didn't think it was going to be marketing and advertising. Um, and so coming into this space, you know, I thought it was going to be similar to like the nonprofit world and, you know, all of that, but very different space. But what I learned is that I had to learn how to advocate for myself. Yeah. And being in a profession where it's, about like when I was in a nonprofit space, it was about giving, you know, and about um, what are the best words I can use to describe? Because women tend to fall, or I found that mm -hmm. um, there's a high percentage of women that tend to go for careers that are more about nurturing and caring for people yes. and helping people. And that's all good if that's you know what you what you want to go for. We're all not the same, um, but that's kind of the space that. I was operating in, but then kind of being in this space, it's, you got to move a little differently. Yeah. You know, it's about how do we hit our business objectives? How do we create strategies that are going to ladder back up to our business goals? Hmm. Um, and so in doing that, when you have to be in some, sometimes you have to be type A and you have to be, you know, super direct, super straightforward um people are going to be that way so you have to learn how to be that way for yourself to protect yourself yeah. um and so knowing what you want and need it just doesn't apply to you as it relates to your personal relationships it can apply also in those professional environments with your teams with your managers um and especially in a space that is predominantly white male yeah. um hetero you know in in their spaces where that's the main audience, right? So like you have audiences where it's mainly white males uh, or agencies where it's mainly white males, mainly yeah. white folks, period. Yeah. And there's other spaces that are, you find that if it's going to be black people there, it's probably mainly mainly black people. And then, which means that makes it multicultural agency. And so it's hard to find spaces where there's really that blend of people. And so when you're in search of creating opportunities that are right for you you have to be able to advocate for yourself and be like well how do we set up this environment yeah. where we're catering to people across across the spectrum people who do not look like each other um instead of keeping this same white <laughs> white male type of attitude or a white male type of type of space yeah. um and I, I'm, I'm also gonna give a um i guess like a disclaimer <laughs> that yeah. where i am in the ad industry I'm actually, I'm really happy. And I do, I will say my teams are not as diverse as I would like for them to be, which is why I raised my hand for work that does create more diversity, equity, and inclusion. Yeah. Um, but not all of it is evil, <laughs> you know, and, and there's a lot of people who have had that experience, but I have learned that I have needed to advocate for myself and tell some people, no, I will not do this. I cannot yeah. do this. Like my yeah. mental health, I need to sleep. I need to do all these different things but I work I work with amazing teams who get it awesome awesome yeah very long answer oh my gosh Coyetta, I am just like <laughs> that's okay yo. you're very expressive that's all right oh yeah <laughs> so you know with branding we we often associate branding with with color or a catchphrase but why is branding more than just color more than catchphrase tell us more 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I love this question because branding is is really about the story that you're telling. It literally yeah. always comes back to storytelling. Um, it's and you're the very good at that, which is why <laughs> I'm hearing you speak and, and, um, and the way you articulate yourself, but you're a storyteller. Thank so you. The, thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Because I remember at one point where I was like, I need to get better at this thing, <laughs> you know? So yeah. definitely, definitely, definitely work. But thank you so much. I've come a long way yeah. <laughs> from I was before. Um, but branding, branding is a story that you're telling, and it's really insight into what's a representative of you and what you stand for, especially if you're taking the personal branding route. But even when a business sits down and they're wondering, well, how do we want to connect with our audience? What are we, what are we selling? And how do we tell the story of what we're selling? Because, you know, and I'll also add that when you're selling something is not literally just about the product or about the service, what you're selling is the why and the why people buy into it. Yeah. Um, so branding is about that thing that's representative of you and what you stand for. Um, and so like a part of the process of building a brand and you're creating your brand elements, even down to the colors part of it, choosing colors is not arbitrary. Yeah. It's not this random thing. It's not because these colors are cute. Yeah. You know, and, and that's, you know, kind of to, I guess to skip, to, not to skip to the next question, but like that's, I would say that that's brand, bad branding is when you're just choosing the color because it's cute, because that's not what it's about. Mm -hmm. um, because there's something called the psychology of colors for those who don't know who are not in the marketing space, where colors have very specific meanings. It's supposed to evoke a specific emotion when people see it. And so that's a part of telling your story. For example, one of my brand colors is olive green. And so olive green evokes space, wisdom, compassion for humanity, diplomacy, self-love. And that's why you can find those who are, um, those who are in the army, they wear like those camouflage colors. Like that's not just random. That's not because they're just trying to camouflage in jungles, you know, to like hunt down the enemy or the case is like they symbolize a certain thing, a, a, evoke a certain emotion, which is why that's the color, um, that's the color that they choose. And that's part of the reason also why I went for that color when I was choosing my brand color. So really, I, I, I definitely want the audience to think about, um, I definitely want the audience to think about um, the fact that they're the, psycholo the psychology of colors. You got a little, I got a little history lesson. Thank you for that. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Psychology is all a part of that. Now, mm -hmm. you kind of touched on it, bad branding. Is there such a thing yeah. as bad branding, aside from picking a color that's cute? Is there mm -hmm. such a thing? Absolutely. Positively. <laughs> um, so bad branding, I find, is inconsistent. Yeah. It's confusing. It's incoherent. You come across it and you're like, wait, what? Huh? Yeah. Okay. Why she did that? Why is that? that? You know? Does your voice go octave higher as well? <laughs> yeah, it's like if you if the pitch if your if your voice gets higher, it's like okay, there's different level of confusion yeah, <laughs> that's happening here. And so I I definitely because like my day to day role focuses on social strategy, social media strategy. Yeah. You know, I come across. I come across different brands on a daily basis. And so like in even creating the content that we create, my one of my main clients is Merck, the pharmaceutical company. Yeah. And so like even creating the social strategy for them, we're like, how is this on brand? How is this speaking to the audience that, um, the audience that we want to focus on? And we have to be, you know, we have to have a narrow focus on that. And it can't just be, oh, because we want to do this, we're going to do this. Because it sounds fun, we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's, it's so important to get clear on who you are, what you represent, and really stick to that voice. Now, I'm not saying you can't, you know, um, experiment yeah. or try different things with your brand or with your social media platforms, um, but it is important to, to, to stick to what you came out for, <laughs> you know, stick, stick to the plan, stick to the brand strategy, yeah. um, and you don't want to be inconsistent because in that in, in being inconsistent with your not just with your brand colors or you know even your logo or whatever like whatever those visuals are but yeah. it's also in the way that the brand speaks yes it's also in the copy it's, it's what's in the caption copy it's what's 
in the, the messaging, the copy that's on your website, or, you know, when people are like even reading your bio or just reading anything that has to do with your brand, um, it's so important to inject all of, all of your um, brand strategy and what your brand represents across the board, copy, visuals, down to your approach, all of it. Awesome. Awesome. So by the time yeah. this episode is released, you, you've already launched your podcast, which you touched on earlier, which focuses on equity, diversity, and inclusion in the advertising industry and starting your journey as a creative. So why is, uh, why is now the right time for On the Move with Mackie podcast? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so now is the right time because although the authenticity, oof, every time I say this word, okay, although, <laughs> although authenticity yeah. has always won, has always been winning. I love that, um, what's her name? President Kennedy, that's her name on Instagram. Like that's yeah. like her motto. Yeah. Although authenticity has always been winning, now it's really of essence to have that. Because the way I see it yeah. is that the pandemic has really sh um, shifted our behaviors yes. and how we interact with each other, how we relate to one another. Mm -hmm. And so people are in this space where they need to hear the real. Real, real. They need to, you know, they, they need to see accurate de depictions of what life is, yes. what their life could look like. Um, and it helps them obviously to aspire to better things, like when they're connected to those things that are relatable. Yes. Um, that's, that's what I want to show on the podcast. I want to show that your favorite creators, your favorite actors, your favorite influencers, producers, they're human too. And they've been putting the work behind their brand for years, even before the pandemic hit, right. they've been putting work behind their brand, literally fighting for authenticity, fighting to produce great work. And I want to show that those same people are also human and those same people they come from places that may not you may not be um, familiar with, yes. but you'd be surprised to learn about. Um, these stories are important because at the end of the day, brands are are, are struggling. We're in the, we're in smack down in the middle of Black History Month. Yeah, but brands are scrambling, <laughs> scrambling to try to tell the stories of Black creators and Black influencers and you know, Black artists. And a lot of times they don't get it right. Sometimes they do. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they don't get it right though. And so regardless of what a big old brand is about to sign up and do, we are going to take the mic. We're going to grab our own mic. We're going to build our own table and tell our own stories. Mm -hmm. And so that's the reasoning for, for this platform. And so far, you know, I've gotten so many, so many great reviews about it and how people have connected to it. And so I just want to keep that going. Absolutely. I want to keep it going. Now's the time. Now is the time. All right. Yeah. You, you described yourself as a culture creator. What is a culture creator? Mm -hmm. I, you know what? So I, I, always, I consider myself to be a special person. Like I, I love me. I love yeah. myself, <laughs> but I, but I, I also think that everyone is a culture creator. We all do it in ways that we don't realize but a culture creator is pretty much someone who comes up with their own ideas that are um, un unique to them or unique to the circumstances that they're in and make it a thing. You know what I mean? Like mm. we've made, can I give an example of a thing, of a thing that we made a thing? What's a good you've example? Made, you've made many things, like, so it's so hard to come up with one. <laughs> Yeah, so like even the creation of memes, for example, I remember how long ago memes came out, but from the first person who did it, they created a culture around communication with each other. Yeah, They created a culture around how we relate to each other. I literally use memes and gifs at work. Yeah. <laughs> like, I would respond <laughs> to people. <laughs> yeah. And that's so millennial of me, but I would <laughs> respond to people in gifs, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it's like something as simple as that created a culture around relating to each other in different ways. Yeah. And so I consider myself a culture creator because I'm showing that it's okay to show up for people. It's also okay primarily to show up for yourself. I am creating a culture of showing up for yourself. I'm creating a culture of being able to visualize yeah. yourself in your best light and in your best self and showing that you can actually achieve that. One thing that my therapist said to me, I'm so hyped. Oh, I love therapy. So one thing that, <laughs> that my therapist said to me is that 
Maki, I'm gonna use her voice. Maki, I am so proud of you. The fact that you created this vision board just shows that you validated your own dreams. Girl, you yeah. validated. <laughs> you validated your own dreams. The fact that you're able to see yourself there. Girl, I'm so like that's a beautiful thing. I'm so proud. And I'm just like, wow, that is so true. Mm. The, the thing is that especially with this culture of content creation and influencing, yes. a lot of it can become about well, how can I look like, how can I look cool? Like how she's looking cool. How can I do that? And then we start to frame up ourselves in ways that people are frame, framing up their own selves that may or may not be authentic to them, but that's what they're putting out on social media or putting out on different platforms. And yeah. we try to aspire to be that exact thing without realizing that we're trying to seek the validation that that other person has already gained but we're no longer seeking the validation for our own selves. Yeah. And so that's one thing, you know, you know, just to get, get some, get transparent. Like that's one thing I was working through. Well, how do I validate myself? Yeah. Because a lot of the work that I do um, is, is public facing. Yeah. And so you're always interacting with people. People are always like, yes, girl, you're doing this and that, this and that. And like, you hear a lot of what people think about you but right. there has to come a time where you got to step, step back and say, well, what do I think about myself? And that be the thing that drives you. Absolutely. And that takes work. That takes work. <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> but it's worth it, Koyana. Yeah, it's worth it. I'm Absolutely. sure you know it's worth it. Yeah. yeah. Therapy is a, a great thing. I think uh, it's stigmatized. Uh, in the black community, I don't know why we're afraid of it, but it, I, I, I'm like you. I love therapy. I think it's amazing, and mm -hmm. you discover yourself. You free yourself, uh, and yes. you yourself to be a human. Um, because yeah. we, we take that human aspect out of it, like we got to be robots. But no, we're just human expressing human emotions, and you know we need to be able to have an outlet. Exactly. Yeah. Here we go. Yes. Yes. And part part of what you do. Um, is relationship and community. Um, so why is why is that so important, especially to the Black community, to build relationship and community? Mm -hmm. I think that's so important because at the end of the day, yeah, I, I I feel like I feel like all we have is each other, you know. Um, and there's also a lot of work happening on the other end of the aisle where people who don't look like us. Yeah. Some of them are doing the work of, of trying to understand and trying to empathize. Yeah. Um, and a lot of them are not. And so with that being the reality, you have to be able to connect with people who who also try to make an effort to connect with you. Yes. But at the end of the day, I believe we, we need each other. Absolutely. And my friend reminded me, oh my gosh, I literally said this years ago. My <laughs> friend reminded me of one time I said to her, if we were meant to be on this planet alone by ourselves, meant to be fully independent, yes, we would have our own planets with our own Walmarts, <laughs> with our own, uh, uh, what's a good shopping store? Target. What's, what's the Tar Tarjay, Tar with our own Tarjay, <laughs> you know, with, with, with our own um, uh, uh, Starbucks, if, you, if you're a Starbucks fan, yeah. like we would have our own planet with all of these things for ourselves. But no, we were not meant to be independent or not, not even meant to be fully dependent on other people. We we're meant yeah. to be interdependent. Right. We were, we were created for a relationship. Yes, we were created to be connected to other people. And so especially now, and it's, it's always been this way, but especially now we need each other. I, I think the shift, the, the culture has shifted dramatically over the years where there was this narrative that black people are like um, crabs in a bucket, mm -hmm. you know, pull, pulling each other down. You know, there can only be one, there can only be one. But it's like, we see people who exist in similar spaces at the same time and yeah. they champion each other. I don't. I don't know what's happening in the in the um the back scenes and behind the scenes. I don't know if they actually cussing each other out after they get off the red carpet. <laughs> but from what I see, black women and black people are in the same or similar professions or even different professions and still existing beautifully. Yeah. 
yeah. together. And so it shows how much we still do need each other. We still do need that connection and relationship with one another. Because I also add this, and by 2060, this is the stat. Yeah. And I mean, people can look it up for themselves as well. <laughs> but by 2060, the world is going to be more diverse than, than it's ever been. Gen Z is the most diverse population yet. And obviously, it's because they're the youngest population in this world, you know, like, folks of, of different backgrounds and races are going to continue to you know uh be in <laughs> be an intimate relationship yeah. you know but diversity is going to be at an all-time all-time high and the ma current majority will no longer be the majority by 2060 yes that's about to change mm -hmm. you know what i mean and because that is about to change it's it, it, now time is really of the essence to be able to connect with each other um in a way that sustains us yeah. in a way that preserves us and in a way that lifts us up absolutely and with our yeah. current uh, pandemic uh panamania um bread yep my goodness uh <laughs> it, it's more important now uh, to build relationships and community uh, because it helps you stay sane, essentially. It just helps you stay connected mm -hmm. and, and keep you sane. So I'm on that. I'm on that. Exactly. Yeah. You know, as a, as a brand expert, you know all things branding. So what is one thing we need to do right now to help our business grow um, concerning branding? Oh, wow. Um, so many things. And you would have thought I would have prepared for this question. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, I told you what the questions were. <laughs> you, you so did. You, I prepared for every other question. <laughs> you so did. Take your time. Take your time. No run. <laughs> I will say um, the main thing that we need for our businesses to grow is to have the utmost clarity around who we want to target. Yeah. And so I think it becomes easy to kind of want to target everyone yes you know um I love that Marie for Leo who's like I feel like a copywriting icon um has been recognized by Oprah yeah she's Tony she's Robbins large, yeah yes all the likes um I love that she said if you're talking to everyone then you're talking to no one so mm -hmm. who is it who is it that you need to talk to and target and build a relationship with those are your people those are your tribe because when you start putting out different products, um, you start creating more product lines or more services that are being added, they are going to be the ones that are going to champion you. They're gonna be the ones that buy into what you're selling and what you're building. So being able to connect with a clear audience is going to be key. And then keeping that messaging consistent across every, every place that your brand shows up. Mm -hmm. So it's not just social media, it's also the website. Um, it's also even the in-person interaction because yeah. you are a representation of your brand. Like literally you physically are also a representation of your brand. So when you're going to networking events or it's a conference, summits, whatever the case is, um, you are a direct reflection of what you put online. And that has to be consistent. Yeah. That still has to resonate with people. So I will say that's that's one of the things businesses need to do right now um ah, and also 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 i'll say this is that businesses need to recognize that the pandemic is not over it's not people over. people are still dying from covid people are still getting sick yeah. families are still not reunited because of this pandemic so being able to recognize that and recognize the shift in human behavior as a result of that is going to be really important how you talk how you talk, uh, how you spoke online before the pandemic is not going to be the same now. And also parroting out what other brands are saying is not the solution either. Yeah. Um, that's why it's so important to really just lean into your audience and, and really observe and connect with them as, as their lives have shifted and will continue to shift mm -hmm. as we continue to live through this pandemic. Absolutely. We are praying that it is over soon. <laughs> yeah. But um, messaging uh, and especially adapting to the climate, which is pandemic, uh, the pandemic climate, um, the messaging mm -hmm. needs to be different. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, so I see you on the gram living your best life. Um, mm -hmm. 
got a beautiful smile. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but I want to, I want to know what is the conversation that you have with yourself when you're not feeling your best? Girl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so let me say this. When I'm living my best life, I really am living my best life. Like that's oh, not, yeah, so it's not, it's not posing for the gram. That's good. <laughs> like not at all. And, and the thing is that I also, I, I just love being photographed. I, I love taking <laughs> pictures. Yes. I love taking video. Like I'm the one I actually do look back on. I actually, and not even like the same day. Cause like I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of like rewatching my stories literally hundreds of times while they're up. <laughs> but even, but even cool. like outside of the moment, yeah. maybe a few days later, a few weeks later, I literally look back and I'm like, wow, I had such a great time. Yeah. And like being able to recall those memories, those beautiful memories is self-care. Yes, like yeah. you just remembering how good you felt like when you was, you know, popping, locking, dancing, and, you know, yeah. laughing and talking yeah, like about it. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, or laughing with friends, like those, remembering those good, sweet memories is self-care and it, it brings you a level of um, peace and calm that is unmatched. Um, but wait, what was the question again? You asked, <laughs> oh, what do I do when I, <laughs> what do I do? Not feeling what do I do when I'm not feeling my best? Okay, so I have learned to change my self-talk. Mm-hmm. So when I'm not feeling my best, I say to myself, okay, Mikey, I acknowledge how I'm feeling. And girl, Coyetta, this is new. Yeah. This is a new strategy. Because before. <laughs> I, strategy I, I'm, changes, I'm getting, right? Strategy changes. Yes. Yeah. Before, I don't know what the hell I was doing. But now <laughs> what I say to myself is I acknowledge how I'm feeling. This moment, this experience, this thing that was said yeah made me feel sad or it it, it hurt me yeah. it, it disappoint me or you know whatever the feeling is I acknowledge that and I and I felt it um because that validates my humanity mm-hmm. my existence yes and then I um and then I and then I say to myself you're gonna be good you're gonna get through this it's okay this this happened I mean not all not, it, it's okay it's not the answer all the time because sometimes it's not okay yeah <laughs> sometimes it's not okay <laughs> uh, but, but I tell myself that I'm going to get through it um and that I still deserve good things yes because feeling like your best or not feeling like your best self can apply to so many scenarios like whether it be family relationships friendships um, romantic relationships work relationships mm-hmm. all of these things but I remind myself that you still deserve good things. Yeah, I, I agree with and that. And that's what I say to myself. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Because in, in, in that moment, you can feel unworthy, undeserving. So we deserve good things. That's we, We're going to tell the audience to go through that. We all deserve good things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and if you even have to, even if you have to say it to yourself in a mirror, I deserve, and it may not feel like that. But it is the truth. You got to speak truth to yourself. Absolutely. I deserve good things and good things will continue to come to me even if I feel this way because feelings are temporary. Right. Even the good ones are temporary. Exactly. You know, and so it's just a matter of managing your mm-hmm. own emotions in that moment mm-hmm. um, and just mm-hmm. believing good things for yourself. And I feel like it, it almost sounds like fluff or almost sounds like positive toxicity or whatever they call it but the reality is how you speak to yourself just how someone try you and someone pulls up on you and says on you sideways you and you wouldn't like how that was said to you you shouldn't talk to yourself that way either so definitely my 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 self-talk has has changed when I'm not feeling my best and and I love it here I love it (laughs) therapy changes your life Um, it does it does for the better and we need to recognize it. And um, I would, from my own experience, recommend that people go to therapy. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So Miss Makisha Noel, this has been very uh, enlightening. So tell us, tell the people where they can find you. Yes. So y'all can find me 
at Makisha Noel everywhere. That's Emma, A-K-I-S-H-A-N-O-E-L. That's me on Instagram, on Twitter. My website is makishanoel.com. And if you want to listen to the podcast, it's on the move with Maki on Spotify right now. Um, and I know Spotify is getting a whole lot of heat, a lot of um, heat. understandably so. Yes. Um, but that unfortunately is the only place where my podcast is. So for those Apple podcast listeners, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out, y'all. But <laughs> I got y'all. But you can find me at Makisha Noel everywhere. Perfect. Miss Makisha Noel, it's been an honor. By the way, I love your name. It just sounds so, it sounds like poetry. Thank you. Oh my gosh. My daughter's middle name is Noel. So I always. <gasps> oh my God. Yes. 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 Is it like with the two L's? No, just one. Nice. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. I just I love that. Love the way it flows. So thank, thank you so much you. for your time. Um, I'm glad we got it together so we could finally be here together. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I know your episode is going to be received well by my audience. So thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you too, Koyana. No problem. You take care. All right. You too. Okay. Thank you for tuning in to another great episode. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, as all these things help to keep the podcast alive. Take care. Until next time.